please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, 610 points higher. I don't recall when was the last time I saw this kind of move on the Sensex 611 and a lot of stocks are surging. Just take a look at Fortis's intraday chart. Uh, there's just a huge amount of uh, quantities being bought on that one over the last five or six minutes. Uh, that stock, of course, has moved to high point of the day. But, of course, most of the market has moved to high point of the day, so that should not surprise you. Uh, some of the high beta names are also doing well uh, right now. But, uh, Anuj, I just wanted to point out, along with the high beta names, guess what else is finally moving? Mm -hmm. SBI itself is finally off on its feet as well, and it's it's well off the, the lows. In fact, it's just trying to break into positive. It has broken positive. Even State Bank of India is now finding the buyers. Oh, yes, so obviously, <laughs> you know, you will see a lot of short covering, a lot of, uh, you know, buying as well in individual names. We discussed, uh, you know, Yes Bank as well. BT Yes, it, I'm uh, Ashwini. Uh, I'm, you know, guessing right now there would be pr problem of plenty. But uh, what's what's your call now? And uh, in terms of individual stocks, uh, what would you buy? See, you have to strike wherever you know the maximum shorts are there. So right now is the time to buy financials, and that's what we are doing. HDFC is a buy with a stop of 1830, target of 1900. Indusind Bank is a buy with a stop of 1700, target of 1765. And ICICI Bank is a buy with a stop of 294, target of 310. Okay, uh, Mitesh, let's get your ideas in as well. Yeah, um, I have a buy on NTPC. Actually, there's some good pricing volume uh, breakout happening there, but it's uh, moving slightly higher. So try to buy around 168 half, keep a stop at 166 for 174 at the target, and a BTST on Infosys with a stop at 1178 for targets of around 12, 5, 12, 10. Okay, fair point. Uh, 637 higher now on the Sensex and 204 on the Nifty. Looks like uh, this is a market, of course. It's going to close at the high point of the day, but uh, perhaps above the, the 20 DMA as well. It's Monday and it's time for Midcap Mania with Nigel D'Souza. Nigel, what stock are you tracking today? Well, the stock that we're talking about is 20 microns. And as has been the case with the Midcap Index, well, this stock as well has corrected nearly around 35 to around 40% from the recent peak. What does the company do? Well, the company is into mining, then they make it you know, into micronizing, sub-micronizing, and even nano-sizing. So as it gets smaller, then in fact the realization goes uh, uh, higher for this particular company. Now to tell you a little more about it, they produce industrial minerals, uh, functional specialties, as well as performance additives. That's basically what they do. This is a quick background. They have nine captive mines, which is their strength, which is a bit of an entry barrier. The annual sales is around 4 lakh tons. Now, just going by the total reserves, they can go on for another 20 to around 25 years going by these uh, reserves itself. Now, if you just take a look at their mines, it's located in various places. Rajasthan, Gujarat, you have it even in Tamil Nadu, and a whole host of, uh, you know, uh, types of mines. The calcite mines, dolomite mines, you have bentomite mines. What do they use, you know, the producers that come in from these mines for? Well, they make things like calcium carbonate, they make china clay, as well as talc. So that's basically what they do. But it's a mini play in terms of the paint industry. Why do I say that? Because the paint industry, well, they in fact uh, gets quite a lot of its products and its raw material requi requirements from there. Micronized minerals is something that they require, so that's point number one. And we know the paint industry depends uh, on titanium dioxide, that's TI2. Now, they have come up with a particular product, that's lithoma. And that is known as a bit of a substitute for titanium di dioxide. So that's another play. In fact, they're trying to add value on some of their products. Exports, smaller part of their business, but growing at a faster clip. It's growing at nearly around 20 to around 22%. Now, if you take a look at a few more details, the key clients, you know, for them, uh, Axo Noble is one of the key, uh, key clients. You have Berger Paints as well in there. So a lot of these frontline paint companies, that's why I say, in fact, it's a proxy play because you get 45 to around 50% of its revenues coming in from there. And besides that, the paper industry as well, they have a fair bit of exposure. ITC as well as TNPL are in there. Even Pitalite finds its way into that list. Well, they're looking at some diversification. Currently, they're doing B2B. So they're selling to these companies, and then the companies are selling their products. What they're looking at is a bit of B2C. So they've launched some herbal division products, which are up for you on the screen. And they've also launched the construction chemical division. So some of their, you know, some of their silica waste that otherwise they had to get rid of, now it's an input for some of their construction uh, industry activities. So that's basically in terms of their diversification. Very small part of the business. Let's see how it does going ahead. First nine months, no fireworks, no big growth on the top line. The EBITDA number, well, it's grown at a tad bit less than the revenue, telling you that there is some margin compression. And PAD number as well, 
not too great. And if you take a look in the last few years, though in the terms of top line, there's not a big growth, but margins have improved from around 8% to around 13.5%. And that's something that should go down well. And tell you what, a couple of years ago, they were making a losses. Now, in fact, they're making nearly around 15 crores on a per annum basis for a market cap of around 150 uh, crores or thereabouts. What don't I like? Let's put up the net profit number as well. That should come up for you. What they don't like about the company is the promoters are selling. Now, I understand one of the promoters are looking to sell out, and that's what's really causing the crash in prices. And just take a look at that. 50% or around 43.3%. That is something that goes uh, as a bit of, uh, you know, something that doesn't go down well. And the other factors, if you take a look at the net debt, it's around 140 crores. For a market cap of around 150 crores, you'll say, well, it's not too much. But they're borrowing at nearly around 15 to around 17%. Just looking at the finance costs, that should come for you, come up for you on the screen. So both these two are a bit of negatives. The promoter stake, uh, you know, falling down, as well as the net debt, and they're borrowing at high prices. Well, to sum things up, in terms of the trailing earnings, the stock is trading at around 10 times. In terms of an EV upon EBITDA, it's trading at around 5.5 times. This after the recent correction. Interesting stock, a bit of a play on the paint industry. Let's see how it does going ahead. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. Uh, well, standard disclaimer, of course, uh, this is not a stock recommendation, just some interesting uh, uh, anecdotes that uh, Nigel has picked up. By the way, just take a look at what's happening with steel stocks now. Uh, uh, so, uh, Tata Steel and Jindal Steel and Power, two stocks where you have seen aggressive shorting for the last few days. Uh, uh, there you're seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, buying right now. That's Tata Steel stock uh, at the high point. That's Jindal Steel and Power as well surging about 4% uh, right now. Uh, uh, before we go to Nimesh, uh, Ashwani, any, any quick uh, chart check on both uh, you know, Tata Steel or Jindal Steel? See, JSW Steel uh, still hasn't uh, gone to its 200, below 50. So I think with the stops here around 220, uh, we could see a, a move back towards 260, 265. Again, Tata Steel, etc. got uh, you know hammered and shorts came in. I think metals, both because of short covering and due to global reasons, uh, could be a leader in this uh, sort of pullback. Tata Steel is at 200, so anybody who wants to get in, this is the right time, uh, say a stop below 600, and we should uh, see levels of 640, 650 easily coming in the next couple of days. Okay, fair point. Uh, big run right now on steel stocks as well, as of course is the case with the market as well. Let's get an insight into dealing room chatter. Then Nimesh has here with Trader Talk. Uh, Nimesh, you were talking about it in the morning that there, there's possibility of one big short covering bounce. Uh, but what's been the feedback today from the from the dealers? Well, and it's clearly this looks like a short covering rally. You know, so so that's that's the first initial feedback. But the good part is, you know, after the gap up, we've you've maintained that. And we built on that on that gap of opening, so it looks like you know there is this momentum now for the short curve to go, you know, to, to further happen, and that will lead the markets even further from these levels. So that's quite possible. But even within the flows, it's quite mixed. Uh, while DIs have bought some, you know, some into the large cap names, but for, but still the FI seems to be the net sellers in the cash market. So that trend continues. Uh, clearly, you know, across the board, we are, what we are seeing is, is short covering, whether it's metal names, the large cap names, even for that matter, the bank Nifty has seen a good short curving rally. So you know, Nifty is, is clearly taking a supported 200 DMA and pulling back. So that can just continue for the next few days from here on. It's largely a, a global rally, which is helping the Indian markets as well. But still, the sense I'm getting is, you know, this will be seen as a rally to sell and not to add into the position. So clearly, that, that's something, the feedback coming in from the dealers that use this rally to at least sell the, lose, the, the weak stocks that they have in the portfolio. Uh, you know, while the, while the markets are up, to, the Nifty is up 200 points, still the mid-cap and small caps are underperforming. So that clearly shows that it's clearly a large-cap driven short covering rally which is playing out for the Indian markets. Uh, the other factor to watch out would be the FTSE rebalance, which will be effect on uh, 16th of March. Some mid-cap names will be in focus, the likes of uh, IFL and, and Eris Life, because the, 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 there will be a massive buying coming in those stocks. But largely today's rally is attributed to aggressive short covering across the board, whether it's banks or metal names. Okay, all right, Nimesh, thanks very much for that. Uh, plenty of short covering. Ashni, I just had a question for you on PSU banks. Now, is it time for the bears to pack up here and, you know, not try to be too brave? Because all the PSU banks are looking at a recovery from the lows. So what's the strategy here? Last 10 minutes to go. See, they can, you know, maybe rally, you know, 3, 4, 5 percent. But I don't think they will start outperforming and you'll start seeing 10, 15 percent type moves. The people who are still left in PSU banks possibly will not let the stocks rally and would try to get out on all rallies. But if you you are into you know PNB since 140, you can take it off a bit. 
but overall the big uh, you know downsides are done from here a very marginal downside if any uh, should be should happen but upside is unlikely have a second or third attempt but for now what has happened now is that you got two boundaries now mm. on the way down the 200 day moving average which is rising i think it will now rise to somewhere around 10200 and on the way up 10600 there about uh, and you have to now play your risk reward your you know trade management mm. if you're an investor of course uh, this is a rally in which you should be moving to as nimesh was also pointing out to good quality stocks and perhaps getting a bit of uh, you know rid of junk in your portfolio okay well on that note let's get you the promised big view from the street let's find out what shankar sharma thinks of the current market correction Stock prices are down 30% or 40%, 35%. If balance sheets are in good shape and if the earnings number are still intact, then they represent no-brainer no buying opportunities. I mean, that's been my central learning. So, and, and that's a very simplified learning, but it has it has really worked over the years. So, I mean, all the companies that I that I've spoken to, stock prices are down 30%. Numbers look intact, balance sheets are in good shape. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer to go out and buy those companies without any doubt at all. You're going to see a huge bull market in emerging markets. It's just the beginning of a resurgence of a bull market. If you go back in time, bull mar uh, uh, EMs have been actually trailing the global markets uh, over the last, over let's say, uh, from 2010 onwards. I think that trend is reversing. And I think that's because of the commodity bull market and the weakness in the dollar. Uh, these two factors uh, will, will drive emerging markets uh, significantly higher. Well, uh, just uh, watch out for that conversation. You can catch the entire interview in just about three minutes from, from now as soon as we hit closing bell. So that's uh, Shankar Sharma coming up for you in just a moment. As we are getting down for the close, let's also get in some thoughts from Mayuresh Joshi. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, big, big move today on a you know, couple of uh, individual stocks. First of all, your thoughts on ITC and whether you'd recommend a buy there. So afternoon, Sulbi. Uh, no, I think it has been languishing at lower levels. Uh, and what has happened in terms of the GST rates and says, uh, I think the worst probably is behind, at least in terms of the imposition of those rates. Uh, the second element in terms of the non-FMCG business actually doing well in the quarter gone by gives the confidence in terms of the capex that they've done towards this segment actually starting to bear fruit. Uh, so though cigarette volumes might have some amount of decline, the compensation in terms of price hikes, along with the other FMCG business, the agri-trading business, and expectations of the hotel business again bottoming out, at least as far as the reported revenues are concerned, and valuations probably remaining supportive, stay in favor of ITC. So yes, I think if one's got a long-term view, we remain positive on this stock. Okay, Mirish, good afternoon. Uh, uh, what about a stock like Tata Motors? Afternoon, Anuj. You know, again, I think we've discussed this in the past. Uh, valuation is very, very supportive for the counter, but what has happened in terms of this restructuring exercise and volumes which have remained uh, extremely volatile, ex-China, I think that is going to be one factor. The other factor in terms of what actually comes out, out of the retaliatory trade tariffs, uh, is going to be an overhang onto the stock. Uh, so again, within the large cap universe and specifically within the auto universe, uh, though I think Maruti is a tad bit expensive at this point of time, I think the earnings are still coming through. There is strong volume growth and the utilization of its Gujarat plant would ensure that the fixed overheads probably are taken care of. So again, I think strong earnings momentum is the prime reason why we like Maruti even from the current levels. Okay, well, just about a minute left. So Anuj, this will perhaps qualify as a Super strong day of trade. I think the last time we had such a big intraday point move mm. was, uh, you know, when this big bond deal tantrum happened in, uh, in you know, uh, on Wall Street and we had that big intraday swing. Yeah. So that was Feb 6. That was another day. We had a almost a near 200 point move on the Nifty. Uh, but having said that, what does the screen tell you today? You know, today has been a classical case of risk management. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the risk management or this morning mm -hmm. was about looking at the fact that 200 day moving average was being held and it was just about 100 points from here. So perhaps that as a stop and take a long trade. I mean, try that because, you know, this market was net short and at some point the short covering move would have been quite vicious and that's what we have seen. Uh, let's see from uh, tomorrow if that mm -hmm. move can sustain. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, after a 200 point rally tomorrow morning, it will be interesting to see what kind of gap we get. Yeah. up or down and that i think we'll take it from there for today of course this was just a massive powerful move a uh, lot of index heavy surge today stock of the day of course was still itc was up about four percent though having you know we have clarified that this really is not the end of it i mean the things could still evolve from here but for today at least the stock was up about four percent then of course icici axis 
Reliance, HDFC, Infosys, lot of heavyweights supporting the market. Maruti made a big comeback. Tata Motors, uh, HCL Tech, Tata Steel, big movers actually in today's trade. Uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank as well. Uh, on the way down, not too many. Perhaps Coal India, minor bit of disappointment perhaps over the dividend amount. Uh, and Aurobindo Pharma was down about 2%. But overall, it was a day where, of course, gainers dominated. Absolutely. Uh, even in the mid-cap market, you know, towards the end, again, the advanced decline ratio, uh, advanced decline ratio did get positive. So, uh, slightly in favour of the advancing than the declining stocks, and the mid-cap index also up about one percent. So, if we talk about the winners here, United Spirits, for obvious reasons, five five and a half percent on the upside. Let's get Radico Khetan, which kept it good company throughout the trading session. Uh, we've had some big moves on, uh, you know, a couple of other names, Graphite and HEG. Once again, some of these stocks were on the move. Graphite 5% up. That was the kind of uh, sort of uh, swing that we saw today. Hitachi Home, decent day today, 5.5% on that stock. Uh, some of the JP Group stocks have uh, really, really uh, risen smartly today. So if you're looking at JP Associates, then we're talking about 5%. Uh, Jay Prakash Power, almost 20% move coming in over there. Uh, Jindal Steel and Power, 4, 4.5% 4 on the higher side. JSW Steel, Sale, most of the steel stocks had a pretty good session for themselves. Uh, something like a Suzlon has managed gains. Fortis, as Anuj was pointing out towards the end of trade, 2% on the higher side. That was Fortis for you. Good day for GMR Infra. So uh, quite a few of these names uh, really stood out on the upside. A uh, couple of the uh, other outliers, Reliance Capital has had a decent session, 5.5% up on that stock today. Mahindra Logistics has managed a strong 7, 7.5% up move as well. So these were uh, most of the gainers. If I talk about the losers, then obviously PSU banks are still there on the negative list, but off the lows, including something like Andhra Bank. That stock was down almost 12% at one point in time, cut that loss to just about half towards the close. IDBI Bank has, however, still had a rough session today, 8% down, so no such luck for IDBI coming through. PFC, again, by 5, 5.5% 5 on the lower side there. Let's get REC as well and just see the final rates on... Uh, REC, Rural Electrification Corporation, that'll just come up. So yeah, negative day there as well. Uh, and some of the sugar stocks are still reeling under pressure. Bajaj Hindustan would be one example. So these were some of the uh, areas that didn't work out, but otherwise, even in the mid-cap market, some sort of uh, swing and some flare definitely coming in today, Anush. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, let's uh, take perhaps some final thoughts from our experts. Uh, Ashwini, then on for tomorrow, uh, would you still want to try a long trade uh, for through the day tomorrow? See, first of all, tomorrow is likely to be sideways. Even in the US, maybe uh, today's kind of holding on to the gains. So tomorrow, even if you do get a gap up, you want to wait for the you know, market to come off a little bit before you try to get on. Because on the bank nifty, if you see the last uh, half an hour, it's basically vertical. These sort of things don't sustain. So tomorrow could be more sideways than today. But... Um, you know, the market is showing some amount of confidence that now people may be willing to buy the dips because till today morning, I think Bank Nifty was fairly jittery. Okay, uh, finally, uh, Mayuresh, uh, would you like to leave us with any, uh, you know, a specific call there if you're looking at the mid-cap universe, any uh, new stock idea that you've uh, come across over this correction period? Oh, two, three impacts would be, and I'll quickly go through them. I think HSIL is something that I'm liking on declines. Uh, the capacity building that has probably happened in the building's product division is going to augur well, uh, and that growth that you're going to probably see with the Swaj Bharat Abhiyan and the other government schemes uh, is going to abet growth. Uh, the container uh, uh, division business is going to do well, again, with a growth of 5-6% for the industry as a whole. And with that, I think the sum of parts should move up. The demerger of the consumer business uh, is also going to augment the return ratios for the company. So 12% top-line growth, 15% bottom-line growth uh, is something that we believe uh, can help uh, HSI report better ROEs. Uh, the other stock that we probably like uh, within the larger universe uh, at this point of time is Safari Industries. And though largely I think uh, there is tepid volumes on this counter, I think it's a 9,000 crore industry with three leaders, uh, VIP, Samsonite, Safari. Safari's got a 15 odd percent market share, asset light model. You're probably looking at expansion in terms of retail outlets in excess of 3,500 odd uh, number. And that probably is going to abet uh, a very strong 23% uh, top line growth, a 59% uh, bottom line growth and the ROEs are going to meaningfully expand from 10 to almost 20 odd times. Uh, the third stock that we'll probably like uh, 
within the larger universe again is uh, paper stocks. Uh, so a mix of both uh, JK paper, Ruchita paper, where our own expectation is uh, specifically for Ruchita paper expanding its capacities. Uh, the value add realizations from craft paper expected to increase. They are doing a greenfield capex as well in Punjab. And the overall top line, bottom line growth should be in excess of 15 odd percent, abetting the earnings growth in a significant manner. So you're a little bit stock specific at this point of time, but I think uh, these few ideas is something that I probably like at this juncture.